How's it going guys? What are we doing? And welcome to a brand new video tutorial from uh, Pinterest. So today we got a very simple and lightweight comparisons between the two leading package managers in the JavaScript community. We got npm versus yarn. So we're just going to go ahead through uh, these comparisons step by step and see each feeder on both of these package managers, which one is better than the other in, in which, you know, in, in, in which types and of course, what one is going to fit you the best on your daily drives development. And of course, it's going to be really, really interesting if you just follow up to the end of the video tour because you're going to have uh, at the end, we're going to see everything from a perspective of development of a project. So we're just going to pick up a project, try to like manage it using the package manager of these projects. And of course, we try to manipulate everything out. Uh, from the start off. So this is going to be super simple straight to the point. We're going to start off with firstly the npm or I'm going to say the default node.js package manager. So npm stands for node package manager which is simply for JavaScript and a node runtime. It is the default package manager as you've said which basically comes with node.js pre-installed so with it, whenever you install node.js on whatever system you would like to you're going to get npm installed alongside node runtime and of course it has a lot of features and a large repository of javascript packages and modules you can pick from so it has a registry so it is officially the npm's registry which is holed up in the cloud has all everything out of all the repositories all the modules and the packages lives inside of this registry so for both in public private it has you know both of these registries so you can use which offers package distribution for your own team or you can uh, op open source modules for the community so you can just both of them you know you can hold private or either public or which means open source pub packages uh, either for your team or for the community and you can share them throughout this repository or this registry uh, throughout npm now yarn which is also another package manager is basically came for for correcting npm's consequences and misfolds so yarn came after npm to just you know make a better version of npm and you know just correct the misfolds and the mistakes made on npm back then on npm version 3 and version 4 there, there were a lot of mistakes a lot of um, you know consequences when you're using npm so just yarn came from a facebook team and it just to fix all of these issues uh, which is incompatible compatible versions on npm 3 and of course using a lock file so yarn basically uses the npm's registry so it doesn't have its own custom registry no it just uses the basic npm registry but it provides a better uh, way to handle the packages the packages installation and how to manage your projects when you install or use Yarn as your package manager. So they both both share the same registry, so the same server they download from or the fetch packages from the surf servers, but the main difference between of them is actually the runtime or how they behave once they try to install packages inside of your projects or how they cache packages between you know multiple projects to fix the incompatible versions of that and uh, just to save you some a little bit of time in the installation of different packages of course so it allows you to installation from github repos or even local repos so you can you know just do direct installation of uh, from github or either re local repos using yarn now we're going to see the true comparisons or the cons versus the uh, pros of npm versus yarn starting off with npm which basically the default package manager that comes pre-installed with Node.js, it fetches every package independently and installs it independently. So when you say you want to install a couple of packages on your like on your uh, projects, what it does, it takes every single package, it starts with fetching it, then installing it. Once you finish that, it moves to the next package and so on and so forth. So it just installs every single package independently from the other package, which just makes it a little bit slower compared to Yarn. And it has a large support community, so you can find any issues, you can learn from scratch how to use npm so a lot of large community about npm since it's a default package manager and used by a lot of people and of course it is super simple and easy for beginners and straight to the point for you to learn as a newbie to javascript or the node.js ecosystem so if you're a newbie to the ecosystem i would really advise you to go with npm because it's just going to give you an idea of how things work 
then after understanding how the ecosystem works and how everything is tidy up, you can just move out into Yarn for you know better usage if you would like to, but they both share the same uh, features in the same repository or registry, so it's not a quite a lot of difference. Since we got from the left or the right side from here, we got Yarn, which is basically an alternative optimized package manager. So as we have said before, Yarn came from behind the developers at Facebook to make npm or to make a better version of npm since npm had uh, some issues in the past like npm version 3 and 4 so just to you know those misfalls needs to be fixed and that's what yarn exists anyway uh, it is much faster when it comes to fetching multiple packages since it uses a system where it, it just like a sim simultaneously installs all the packages at first at once which makes it faster compared to npm when it comes to installing and fetching packages since all the packages are going to be fetched first then they all going to be installed simultaneously so you're not going to wait for one package to finish to move on to the net to the other and so on and so forth so they all get installed at once which just you know saves you some time compared to npm which is the best thing i see on yarn in here uh, of course it also does caches all the packages for quicker fetching so when it comes to yarn is simply going to cache all the packages you install across your projects across your machine they're all going to be cached inside of like a metadata folder uh, inside of yarn's global folder so all of them are going to be in there so whenever you need access or something just going to like you reinstall something it's just going to fetch it from the cache if the version matches the version that already exists in the cache and it's just going to save you quite some time um, it has to install separately by yourself so that's kind of a bit uh, misleading but most of the people knows how to install it so it's a super straight to the point and easy actually how to install yarn but npm since it came like by default install from node.js it makes it much easier to use and much prefer to use but still yarn super easy to install as well if either you're running linux windows or mac you can just install it using the um, you know pro way and of course you can say goodbye to the uh quotes the it works on my machine so a lot of people says that or i uh, to mean a lot of developers says that say it works on my machine but when you move it to your colleague's machine or your other developer machines you're not going to work so you just say it works on my machine yarn fixes this problem because it provides the yarn.log file which is precisely telling your package manager which versions you've installed since the beginning of your starting off your project so all the versions are going to be saved in this yarn.log file so you can easier um, get access to them and once you deploy it to the to the cloud or you can just move the project to your colleague's machine and they run yarn install so all of the packages are going to be installed they're going to have the same exact versions as your packages in your own machines which is you know of course running the projects and it can work it uh, can can simultaneously run projects on issues so you basically on your colleagues machine gonna have the same behavior and there will be no issues whatsoever which is super great about yarn npm fixes that about using the package dash lock .json, but that wasn't very early it was just like came up in the version 5 which is a bit like a downfall about npm so here we've got two projects like the same projects but we're going to use a different package managers for each project to see what are the differences and how you can use each package manager independently um, on, on whatever project you would like so we got here from the left side npm and from right side we got yarn so we can start off with the basic thing we can just type in npm i've got both of them installed on my machine so make sure to install yarn first if you would like to use the yarn package manager you're going to find the link in the description below or you can just google out yarn and you're going to find plethora of tutorials showing you how you can install yarn on your machine of course so we can just put npm and we can just say help you're going to give you all the commands available in that as well as the options that you can use alongside these commands so this is a list of commands actually plethora of them you can use who am i you can install you can check out the bin the audit for fixing uh, vulnerabilities and patching them um, you can install of course ci test plenty plenty of things you can use that you can also say yarn from the other side so you can say yarn help and it's going to give you all the commands and of course all the options that are available so you can clearly see instead of install there's add 
So here's, you can install, but here you can add just, you know, the same thing, they do the same thing. Uh, there's a global command and the really great thing in here I'm gonna talk about is actually the license command. So all of this command, you can just type in the help and you get, get both of them. Um, to see the real comparison, we're gonna just try to install two packages. Uh, the meantime on yarn and both of that but we first need to initialize our projects using pack.g so i can just type in npm init and of course i'm gonna get this um just gonna type in npm version that mm, i don't know sample project or something uh you can just type in app.js nothing nothing and of course just I'm gonna type MIT in here. Yes, all right. Now we got package.json has been created successfully. You can just turn on to yarn and you say init again, and again it gets the same procedure. So you can say the name. Uh, I'm just gonna say init yarn here. Version, the same thing, description, um, simple project or something. And here are the entry points, repository, author, and of course, license by default is MIT. Private, no. And we got the package of JSON has been saved successfully. So I just marked private as now to make it public uh, whatsoever, but that's the same package of JSON. We got the same configuration in here, just, you know, very identical. We got, haven't got a script tag in here, uh, but NPM generates a script tag for you. You can just type in script tag for you in here, but it's not a big deal. So they share the same schema in here and everything looks pretty identical to both these package managers. Now let's move into the best part or the most important part is actually installing two packages at the same time using this package managers to see the differences that somehow. So I'm gonna just do npm install and throughout this I'm gonna first install Axios and of course I'm also gonna install Chalk. So both of these um, packages, Axios is actually for HTTP requests using promises or based on promises API and the chalk is actually just a colorful console log, um, just text just to output in the console log. So this is basically what it is. Now from the other side here, I'm gonna just do yarn, but instead of install, we need to do yarn add and make sure to add it as so we're gonna add Axios and of course I'm gonna add chalk. So if you wanna just add these packages as developments, you can just type in dev in here. Otherwise, if you remove that, it's gonna be added automatically to the package.json. For npm, you can just do save or save dev, or you can just completely remove it and it's just gonna be saved in there. Just gonna put save in here to save it to the package.json as um, you know a standalone dependency. And I'm gonna start the installation from this side, I'm gonna start the installation from the other side. As you see in here, Yarn started working, npm took a little bit of time. Yarn actually finished, and um, as you can see in here, npm still fetching and installing. So you clearly got a point of how M Yarn is actually faster than NPM when it comes to installing or fetching packages and installing them because it works in a simultaneous way uh, better than NPM does install the packages. But it's not a really big deal about that. So this took actually six, eight, six uh, seconds. This took three seconds. So compared to that, it's actually very huge when you come to installing um, a lot of packages at once. So yeah, this is this is basically what npm does. You can check out a lot of more of the things, but what npm or what yarn is actually really great at. And the really great thing about yarn is actually the licenses command, which basically allows you to take a look on all of the install packages uh, licenses. So if you really want to distribute your project or use it for commercial use, you need to first take a look on the licenses. But better than going to GitHub pages, finding the licenses. And of course, scrapping all the web to get this licenses file to make it work. You can just use Yarn licenses to list out all the licenses of the packages installed inside of your node modules. And you can just get uh, a detailed licenses information about each package so and how it works. So you can just do licenses and ls for listing it. As you can clearly see in here, you get all the licenses. As you can clearly see, we get the MIT license. We've got all of these packages inside of like licenses under the MIT uh, NC styles, which is just a dependency of uh, Chalk. We've got Chalk or Axios in here, just a vendor name, vendor URL, and, and so on and so forth. So you get everything inside of that, like all the licenses, and it gives you a super straight. You can clearly see in here, um, you know, gives you straightforward licenses and how they work. 
The other difference between yarn and uh, npm is actually the yarn lock or the lock file, which saves the exact versions of these package managers. So if you take a look on that, you're gonna get the version of Axios and all the dependencies versions. So once you just deploy your projects or you move it to your colleague's machine and your colleagues run yarn and install, of course, it's gonna install or look at the yarn.lock and it's gonna get the exact versions as your projects run in. So it's not gonna get an updated version or a patched version with a different API schema. So it's gonna, not gonna break your application. It's gonna get the same exact version as your application is running inside of your machine. And of course, it's gonna just download it and fetch it. So it's pretty great in here for yarn log. Of course, package.json or basically package.log.json does the same thing on the NPM side, but NPM did that really lately at version five where Yarn actually fixed that really, really early. So if you're using an early NPM version, you might not get this feature. So you just need to upgrade to uh, the latest version available npm and you're gonna get this um, so this both do the same thing just like a quick differences between that uh, but still really opinionated about what people like to use in a lot of developers actually moved into yarn uh, early days when npm had this issue of like um, you know mislicensing of course the package of log type json but they can move back to npm right now because you know they do pretty much the same thing I uh, still love Yarn when it comes to fetching and packages, and I still love Yarn when it comes to uh, the structure of the way and the logs, how they are structured, and how the simple API is, just like my own opinion, how things are like, like this, but they still both do the same and great thing. I used to use NPM a lot, lot um, back in the days, but now I use Yarn most likely. So yeah, so thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this comparison. I didn't want to give you um, you know, a package manager to go through. So you can use which one you would like to, depending on the features I've explained in this video tutorial. As I've said, if you're a newbie or something, I gonna advise you to go with NPM. Otherwise, if you wanna just get a really strong uh, package manager and you're like an experienced developer, even a mid-level developer, an intermediate one, you can just to move on into Yarn. Um, I can guarantee Yarn is really great and it really supported. So yeah, thank you guys for watching. As I said again, hope you guys have enjoyed. If you really like these video tutorials type of comparisons, make sure to you know put a comments below or a like. I would be really happy. Thank you guys for watching. So see you all guys in the next video tutorials.